What is up guys, McDouble's back again with a brand new video and today I've got the Dragon Warrior Episode 2. We're gonna bust out the single-minded Fury talent, level it all the way to level 70 and I really am excited about the PvP potential of this build. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's jump right in. Okay guys, I changed the way that we're going to be signing up for that tournament. So if you want to participate on Area 52, show me your builds, show everybody in the Ascension community your builds, right? And compete for at least 100 DP probably guaranteed to be more of that because uh, I've already got donations coming in for the prizes and you know I'm not going to take it. It's going to go to you as the winners. If you want to participate in that, go to my Discord. Link is always in the description below for an invite to that. Go to the tournament info and tournament sign up channels uh, which are conveniently placed in a little tournament category and you can have all the same info found there and you can sign up simply by leaving your name your in-game name on your character that you would actually be using during the tournament in that channel i'll then just pm the first 64 people make sure everybody's ready before the tournament and anybody who can't make it i'll start replacing uh with the next names so we'll see if we make it to 64 people we'll see how many people in general decide to compete uh, it doesn't really matter to me. This is all for fun and for content So yeah, if you want to participate in that have a chance at winning some cool stuff Maybe even get your name out there. That's the new way to sign up just a little quick PSA before the video starts <laughs> Okay, let's start the day with uh, some Warsong Gulch, right? Level 59, tip top of the PvP bracket, right? And then we get right into Outland level 60 and plus content. Uh, but for now, we are at our Apex, and I'm very curious to see how the build is going to perform. I already know it's incredibly strong, and we're approaching, actually, the very last time that we will ever use a two-handed weapon, basically ever again, because we're going to go single-minded Fury, and I'm 99.9% .9 sure that it's just better than the two-handed version of this build. So we're gonna go out with a bang, I hope. Okay, we're gonna destroy this guy. Death Coil, another Bloodthirst into an instant slam. Into another Bloodthirst, into another slam. Look at this guy, he doesn't even know what to do. I can break that. He's dead. Boom. Oh my god. That's a Resolute, too. That guy has gear. Look, he doesn't even know what to think. He hasn't lost a fight probably ever. <laughs> He's sitting here thinking, how did I just get dumpstered? He has a monocle and everything, man. All right, let's keep going. We're in. So I've done a lot of interesting things with this build. I've totally designed it to just destroy people very, very fast. And uh, I don't have really any way to keep myself alive because I'm bucking entirely on the whole, you know, the best defense is a good offense type of strategy. I have the lay on hand as kind of like a, oh, you thought you got me, but you didn't type of thing. But it's only once every 15 minutes. And so it's not exactly reliable, but it was cheap. Only three ability essence. Divine shield is six. All right, watch me destroy this guy. Just to get- Oh my god, I would miss. That's actually embarrassing. I missed again. I missed a hamstring there. All right, dragon charge. There is the non-missed hamstring. Look at that slam damage. Dead. 300 no crit. This guy's on me. Dragon roar. 526 no crit. There's a slam. Bloodthirst into another slam. He's gonna die. Very, very nice. Look, he still doesn't know. He Look- He's still targeting me. They're all like, what the hell is this guy? Yeah, I know. It's a strong build. Okay, we're on this guy again. Dragon Roar into the slam. Oh, the slam is so good. Okay, he's gonna die on this slam, right? Yeah, 645 crit. So those are the scores right now, if you were curious. Pretty intense. All right, got the Berserker buff. Guys, I literally have 33% crits. If I'm not getting crits, it's unlucky at this point. Boom! Got no crits, really? All right, dead. Another Bloodthirst into another slam. 497, 237. Like, come on, that was from the same slam. That's one hit, no crit. All right, death coil this guy. Drag, God! Okay, at least we return the flag. You can't, <laughs> you literally can't have the flag and use divine shield. Come on, come on, my friend. All right, I'll take the kill if nobody else wants it. 634 crit, that feels low. Like, I feel like I can do better. This guy doesn't know what to do. I'm so broken. I'm human to break stuns. I have a trinket to break anything if I need it. And I've also got the Berserker Rage for fears and incapacitate effects. It's just so good. I, I can break everything. So it looks like the best thing to do is actually Bloodthirst Hamstring Slam if you can make it happen. That way you're guaranteed a massive, massive slam. I'm gonna try that. It's just everybody's always running from me, so the hamstring becomes paramount. But we'll see if we can get it off on somebody. We'll start with the dragon charge then. Bloodthirst. There we go. Set it up. Hamstring. Missed, obviously. Why wouldn't it miss? I mean, it just makes the most sense. And now slam. This is this is so bad, dude. All right, we'll try it on this guy. Dragon charge into the hamstring. Now an instant slam crit. There we go. 
Yeah, that's pretty easy. That's pretty good damage. Look at that. That is ridiculous. The best thing about Dragon Charge is not even the fact that it's basically just an extra version of Intercept. You know, I can use both the Intercept or the Dragon Charge. Only one, but sometimes one is better than the other. Sometimes you want to instantly appear in front of the person that you're charging at. Other times you want the uh, slow immunity and stuff like that, right? It really depends. So that's one thing is versatility. But the other thing is that it can be used, once again, on the same versatility vein, um, as a way to escape, right? So I've used Dragon Charge often as a flash carrier to cover distance to get away from people it's just good it's really kind of a broken ability to be honest in fact it's kind of amazing that dragon warrior is giving me two different things like it, it, no debate no debate that this is one of the most powerful random enchants in the game right now and it just came out oh man it's definitely one of the most powerful in the game right now all righty that's another cap one more to go we are in first place 15 and zero max damage up by 12k and you have to think with one flag cap and one flag return, I'm not even just killing people. Some of these people with none of that, you know, like everybody right below me on the charts, uh, they have none of that, right? So it's even more impressive, I think. I'm very happy with that. Again, it's, it's not raw mechanics in this case. It is entirely just the build. Just being a good build, right? <laughs> All right, let's get in. I miss too much though. I've noticed I'm missing like a thousand times more often than I'm used to missing. There's kind of a hidden meta on Area 52 because on one hand, you think you can get everything you want. On the other hand, the more you play, the more you realize you can't get everything you want. Now you can get a lot of things though. So then it becomes, you know, who chose what specific niche? A lot of the people I'm fighting have divine shield. I don't. Has it mattered one time though? No. Not a single time. And I think the cool thing is that every single person here could just be what I am right now. They chose not to. They all have their own brains and their own ideas. I love that. There's just so much variety now, you know? And that's something I didn't really think about until recently, is that with all the legendary enchants now, and that's the way you build, like, there's just innately so much variety. Oh my god, the crits are ridiculous. Look at this. Like, this has happened so many times. They just die and they sit there in sadness. Oh, there we go. We won! 18 and 1, I'll take it. Level 61 off that. 7.5k honor for the most part. Jesus, that was ridiculous. Okay, guys, a lot of gear changes and a lot of stuff's been updated. Well, really not that much, but enough to change the build completely. We have got the single-minded fury, which is now going to make my mortal strike and slam hit twice, triggering an additional attack with my offhand weapon. That is pretty massive. I'm still going axe spec. I have double axes on right now for 5% crit and critical strike damage, and because we're using 1H weapons, we've got the hack and slash for a 6% chance to get an additional 100% weapon damage hit off when I attack with a one-handed axe. That's really good. And I got two extra points in weapon expertise because I have been missing a lot lots of dodges so expertise will help especially when we're dual wielding now i think it'll be quite good i am at 960 ap and i'm wearing greens okay we are level 61 and i anticipate massive massive damage you gotta remember i'm already getting off additional slam damage with the dragon warrior enchant but now it's gonna hit twice it's gonna be a massive blow whenever the slam goes off guys it absolutely is so i've been messing around with the single-minded fury version of this build and i am currently of the mind that this is probably the best build in the game melee build that is right now um let me just attack some basically same level mobs i mean it's not anymore because i leveled so fast but the fact of the matter is that you can expect somebody that's my level to be here towards the latter end of their journeys just watch okay I won't even dragon roar. Um, bloodthirst. Okay, it's almost dead already. Slam. Okay, it's it's dead. <laughs> okay, we'll just say it's dead. It's gonna die to the deep wounds. All right, bloodthirst, no crit. Slam, no crit. But it's back again. Okay, are you noticing the fluidity? Let me do this again. So we have a slam there that's instant with a wind fury proc. Okay. I can bloodthirst and it dies. Now, everything is critting all the time, basically. It's like 35% crit. Look at that. That was a slam. That was just a slam. All right, Dragon Roar, 1,300 no crit. That thing's dead, too. So, I think this is going to be a PvE beast. I'm not con- Oh, my God. That was just a bloodthirst. Now, I'm not convinced that uh, Single-Minded Fury is the way to go for PvP. 
Although I'm not convinced it's not, okay? I'm, I'm just gonna do some testing. However, for PvE, it's obvious. And uh, again, it's so smooth. You know what was smooth? It was my Titanic Mutilate build. Like, that was a smooth build, but you had to get so much to make it smooth, right? Um, I don't know if you guys remember those videos, but essentially what I ultimately ended up doing was getting a bunch of hasty random enchants, which reduced the cooldown of things like Bloodthirst in order to make Whirlwind and Bloodthirst just line up properly and even then you could still mess it up well this one doesn't seem to need any random chance in that regard uh, to make it smooth it just is and well that's great you know there's always something to click and it's always correct it seems uh, we'll just have to learn more about exactly which ways to take it so that we can make it as broken as possible and that's what I'm excited about getting the level 70 and and truly testing the build in let's say Heroic dungeons, right? I don't think Mythic Plus is out for the free pick realms yet, but uh, maybe normal Mythics are. We'll see. Yeah, I'm just excited about it, guys. Let's make some more progress. Level 62, like I said. Yeah, let's see what we can do with this character. Okay, level 65, and uh, going single-minded fury has been genuinely crazy. Um, not only do I sometimes still feel weaker than if I just popped on a honed void axe like this one and just dominated with it, at the same time, there are moments where I feel significantly stronger, like PvE in general. And sometimes the stars align, and I get a wind fury proc right after a bloodthirst or on a bloodthirst into a slam uh, and <laughs> into the dragon roar and everything crits, right? And you hit like 15 times with a hack and slash proc it's actually kind of ridiculous but it's definitely more of a stars align type of build which is right up my alley you're not gonna lie so we're gonna keep playing it let's keep uh leveling getting to more bgs and stuff maybe a dungeon here or there we'll see if it pops i had one earlier i did a hellfire ramparts but i didn't have scotta let's see I, I oh yeah i do have it now that's not what it was that just shows deep wounds don't worry we'll be able to see the dps of this build compared to some other people as well all right guys let's do uh caverns of time durn hold keep specifically look at the crits they just never stop look at that everything crits man 2500 dragon roar no crit all right still first place dps and dragon roar was the majority of my damage then Bloodthirst, and then Wind Fury, interestingly enough. I'm currently using one Wind Fury, one Rock Biter, by the way. That's because I've been told that there is an internal cooldown on Wind Fury of three seconds. So using two, one on each weapon uh, is just not as good. So I'm full AP stacking right now, and I'm at 14, 31, and 38% crit. Uh, guys, I'm not really sure how to mentally process this. So I was in first place DPS, and I I'm sorry to my team. I guess I should finish this off real quick before I say anything. I am in first place DPS in situations where I start the pack at the same time as everybody else and I was fiddling with my build and apparently took off single-minded fury and didn't even know it. I'm so damn confused. So this build was just worse <laughs> right now uh, and still I was doing the best. So okay I'm gonna go ahead and just I guess we'll get rid of the blood rage temporarily and uh get the proper thing for my build. All right this should be more damage. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. It is so much more damage. I was missing out. Look at that. That's what I've been wanting to see this whole time. Okay, this feels a lot better now. That's not even close to equal. That DPS, I'm killing it so fast that they can't even get, like, more damage in now. That is a great sign. This is my first real bit of PvE on this build so far. And, you know, just to play it so comfortably already and have great results, it's a good feeling. You know, this is not the draft realm. There is nobody here that has like a straight up garbage build. Everybody's been testing their stuff. They've gone through, uh, in some of these cases, all the way to max level with them. At this point, it's just about leveling and getting your gear, right? So to me, this is results. This is pretty solid initial results for the build. And I knew it was going to do well, but still, it's to be seen exactly how well. So far, so good though. Look at that. Oh my god, the numbers. I'm pulling 2k DPS. This is single target because all these other mobs weren't here yet when I dragon roared. 2k, 2.1k single target, we'll say. 
Uh, well, not really. The occasional Dragon Roar Cleave probably significantly helped. Look at that damage. Jesus, yeah. 25%, so a fourth of my damage came from that. But even without that, I would have beat everybody. Um, <laughs> that's ridiculous. The slam is not a significant portion of my damage, which makes almost no logical sense. And I'm curious, if I play a 2H version of the build, does that change? All right, let's try it on the boss, okay? Massive crit, starting it off. Okay, another Bloodthirst into a slam. I have the Heroic Strike now, by the way. Now, I think the best part about this build, again, is the fact that it never ends. Like, I'm always doing the same thing every single time. It never stops. The Bloodthirst always comes back. I always have the Rage, and then I can switch right back to what I need. So, first place DPS, 1400 consistent on the boss. But also consider the gear. I mean, I've got two PvP trinkets on, and... I'm using greens. Look at this, like level 45 green belt. I'm really excited about this. A build hasn't worked this well for me since the Titanic Mutilator build, and I made like seven videos out of that one. So uh, yeah, that's exciting. Okay, I had a pretty good idea. Let's go ahead and use my maxed out honor, by the way, from all of these BGs to uh, buy a Tome of Spec 2. So that means I can have two completely separate specs, by the way, because you can pick all of your abilities, right? So literally, this could be a melee spec, and my spec 2 could be a healing spec, and it would be fine. Uh, that's a really big perk, actually, of not playing on draft. I like when things just synergize, right? Okay, the BG meta is the way to go. Uh, are there any perks to that? Oh, you mean I get a whole nother spec just for doing that? Hey, sounds like a great reward for no reason. I like free things for no reason that are fun and don't hurt people, right? I mean, this is wonderful. All right, there you go. Second spec. You can name them too, so let's go ahead and see. Um, okay, Dragon Warrior. We'll always remember the Dragon Warrior. And who knows what spec two will be. Okay, that wasn't too bad. We won, and you know, once it gets to a point where you know you can't lose, you just kind of quit trying as much, but even with that, we just destroyed everybody in damage.
So as you can see in the background, Dragon Roar and Dragon Warrior as an extension of that, obviously, is just absolutely bonkers. But the roar itself is just key. 2k plus crits with the gear that I have is absolutely absurd. Knowing that I can make that go even higher, by the way, is even crazier and more exciting. I have not dominated to this degree with any build in a really long time i'm talking about you know mechanics mean a lot right that's certainly true but i'm talking about the build itself being domineering in and of itself you know to where i could take a noob right now give him my character and uh explain to him how to play and after maybe an hour he could probably produce the exact same results i'm just saying um in these bgs because the build is that strong highly recommend you guys play this play it before it's either nerfed and i don't think it will be by the way uh or you know before everybody gets their hands on it and you can't really you know embrace a meta in which you're the outlier you know because the way this is going to work is that people are going to be playing around dragon warrior now and they're going to be playing dragon warrior that like that is exactly even before this video has gone live that is seemingly the case Okay, so throughout my journeys, especially because I decided not to go all the way to 70 in one video, so a lot of people knew my name and what was going down, obviously, from episode one, but a lot of people have been trying to give me their two cents. I've had multiple people message me, linking me their builds, telling me that they've gotten crazy rating in some cases, telling me they've done ridiculous DPS in other cases, all of which I'm sure are 100% true, but I need to do it myself, so I don't want to. To do those builds i want to do my build as a result i'm going to go ahead and explain to you the build that i have finalized myself on at level 69 thus far uh, i say finalized let's say you know it's the end of the leveling experience you know i've done a shit ton of testing i'm going to be level 70 very very soon and this is what i came up with during those journeys and as a result all of the bg clips all of the ownage all of the dps that you see uh it, it had my mindset attached to it so you always have that peace of mind it's not a bad build uh but i did want to put it out there that lots of people have great builds with dragon warrior that they recommend so uh you know what do your own research and do your own theory crafting because you're just as smart as me. But anyway, this is what I've got so far. First of all, I'm going to do a, a pseudo kind of deep dive into this because I, I feel like people who are regular watchers must be sick of hearing me say the same talents, you know, because certain talents are key in certain builds and you're going to use a lot of them. They're going to overlap is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so, you know, repeating the same thing must suck, but I am going to try my best to uh, just synthesize it all for you a little bit, uh, make it smaller, make it simple so that you still get what's going on. Uh, but still make it semi-advanced to that degree as well. So we have Cruelty, 5% crit, 5% total strength. That's been massive. So why is this massive? Well, crit is currently the main way I'm trying to uh, make this build work. This is actually as a direct result of a recommendation that I heard from a pal of mine uh, who sent me his PvE DPS build, and I didn't want to copy the build, and I didn't really even give it a good look at all. Uh, I skimmed it out of respect, because, you know, if somebody's going to put in that kind of effort, I'm at least going to look at it, but I, I don't want to copy it, and I don't want to look at it too hard, because I don't want to be tempted to copy it. But one thing they told me was that stacking crit, in their opinion, was far better than even AP. That crit was more important than even AP. So I thought Axe Spec, and they obviously recommended Axe Spec as well, I thought Axe Spec would be the best for that, obviously. So I'm going to go with a heavily crit focused build. I, I like to take things to an extreme, so I took everything I could, really, realistically speaking, that would give me crit, and that's why currently I have 39% crit, which is an absolutely, like, I just want to make this clear, this is absolutely bonkers. Like, this is ridiculous amounts of crit for World of Warcraft, for anything. There is no baseline class that ends up with over 30% crit on every attack, as far as I know. I mean, maybe if you're at the end of an expansion with the best gear humanly possible, um, it may be, right? But, like, come on, 40? You know, and I'm level 69. I, I don't even have the good level 70 gear yet. That's bound to go up. Um, so that is highly important to keep in mind. When I say crit, I mean crit. You know, I don't mean just 20% like most people kind of baseline it at. So I've got the cruelty for that. Some other talents to point out and uh, important notables would be Berserker Stance, which is giving me a ridiculous amount of crit. 6% crit on Ascension is not a joke. You do take 5% more damage, but this is not 3%. It's 6% crit now. I didn't even know this. I just happened to take this and I looked at it and I was like, wait, when did they change that? So this is important for a variety of different reasons. Number one, if I decide to free up some talent points, I get 6% more strength although admittedly i'm not really sure why i would want the 15 percent threat reduction here i feel like tanks don't really need me to have that and if i wanted six percent 
strength, I could just grab it here and also get some of my strength as hit rating. So that's a, a bit of a weak one, I think. But what it does allow me to do by taking uh, the Berserker Stance, not only am I getting a ridiculous, you know, increase there in crit, but I can also go to Precision. And Precision was changed about a year ago in Ascension, because once upon a time, you did not have to be in Berserker Stance to get the full effect. And so it was really a stupid talent. It was really good. Now you do need it, and, uh, hey, it's... Turns out it's still great if you have the Berserker stance that we do. This is 3% hit and 3% more crit. 9% crit for going Berserker stance. You have to keep in mind, I get 9% crit for 3 talent points and 2 ability essence. That's, that's value, guys. That is absurd value. Now, I've been kind of messing around with things. I wanted more hit because I'm just sick and tired of missing people. You know, I don't like it when fights are dictated by who got the parry. You know, that's crap gameplay. So I'm going for more crit. Uh, in some ways, I'm overdoing it a bit, but if I get to level 70 with the same plan that I have now, I'll have 5% hit with dual wield spec, as well as 25% more offhand weapon damage, which is good. It's more slam and mortal strike damage uh, because I'm single-minded fury. Now, on the same vein of the crit, 20% more direct damage with my warrior abilities when they crit. That's basically everything I do. 5% more crit and crit damage with polax spec. Absolutely massive. Now, I took one point in deep wounds just for the bleed because I am using 1H weapons and it's just not as strong uh, than it would be if I use a 2H weapon. This is really best to max out 3 out of 3 with like a 2H build, right? Like a straight up two-handed weapon mastery build. But I took it to proc the blood frenzy for more attack speed and more physical damage. You can't beat that. 15% uh, straight slam damage here. The swing timer being reduced obviously means nothing because we're going for the instant slams, but still important to get that 15% more damage. Slam is not a huge part of my damage in PvE, but in PvP, you can see right down here it is. It's top three, okay? And uh, part of the reason it's top three is because I'm using Skull Crusher and Battering Ram, which otherwise kind of were like super cool, but slam just wasn't good enough in my mind for these to be worth anybody's time. And they did it. They made slam instant cast. I've been begging for an instant cast slam effect for a really long time. And uh, people would be like, no, it's too broken. It, you know, it, it, they were right. It's broken. I, I'm broken. But still, it's fun. Fun is what matters. So this is what I get now for my instant slam. Not only does slam with battering ram now ignore 10% of my target's armor. So I'm reducing their armor by a ridiculous amount, by the way, with this build. And we'll get to that later on. But it also applies a stack of Sunder Armor, which also, if you don't know, reduces my opponent's armor, so that's pretty stupid. But Skull Crusher otherwise sucks, but with this build is broken. It's kind of doing the complete opposite. It allows my slam to reduce my target's intellect and trigger what they call a power burn effect, burning mana and dealing additional damage based on the mana burnt. Now, again, it's reducing my target's intellect, right? It's doing uh, damage to them based on being a caster and Battering Ram is hurting the really heavily armored people. So I'm cutting through that armor. I've also got Zephyr, which is just giving me more attack speed when I get Wind Fury procs, which I get quite a bit of. Uh, you know, there is that three second ICD, which is important to keep in mind, but this could be replaced, but for now it's worked. But back to the talents, right? It all comes together. Because if you see in the Fury Tree, what I've also gone ahead and got was Blood Surge. This makes it where my slam is now going to make my Blood Thirst trigger no cooldown and ignore 50% of my target's armor. So doubling down on that armor concept. And of course, Unending Fury is just a flat damage buff to all of my spells. And I have Unbridled Wrath for more rage on auto. All of that's really nice. But back on the topic of a reduction in armor, or, you know, armor pen in general, I've also gone into shredding blows. This means when I crit, I have 15% armor pen. Okay, so you can see it all stacking up now. Oh, and we also took three points in flurry for 15% melee attack speed off a of crit, which we're basically always going to have up alongside the aforementioned shredding blows. Remember, Dragon Roar is ignoring armor as well. So it's like being armored means nothing against me, and that has to suck. Uh, in this same vein, I know that since I'm going to be doing so much armor pen damage that having raw AP is the best way to go. It's going to be massive. It's going to absolutely hit like a truck, and I've proven that. So I've gone with a bit abilities that are optimized to increase my AP as much as possible, and this is what I've done with it so far. Remember the 5% strength from Cruelty? That still exists. On top of that, I have all of these spells here. Rockbiter weapon for my offhand, Blessing of Might, True Shot Aura, and in the Subtlety Tree, Deadliness for a flat 6% attack power boost. Now I have all of these attack power boosts because Bloodthirst is going to hit way harder. You can see 990 damage at level 69 is no joke, and uh, the Dragon Roar crits over 2k. So nah, that speaks for itself, I think. Now the thing I decided to use towards the end, because I was looking for more ways to boost my damage, 
and I wanted an on use damage increasing cooldown, but I couldn't have the death wish because we're changing that to Dragon Roar with this build. So that is a bit of an inhibitor, you would think. But I went with the Bestial Wrath. Now, this is interesting. If you look at my build very clearly, you can see that it's just a glass cannon. I have the Divine Protection and the Disarm because I was sick of getting into PvP against PvP specs builds and losing just because of abilities like that. So I decided to switch for a little bit. But, uh, you know, realistically, that's six ability essence I could put in the more damage, I bet. Uh, but for now, that's my... Basically, my only PvP spec parts of the build and the Death Coil as well. But the Bestial Wrath is giving my pet 30% more damage, and with the Beast Within talent, it's giving me 15% more damage. That is stupid. That is better than Death Wish because it's not even just physical. It doesn't matter, right? I mean, it's going to count for things like Death Coil and stuff, but uh, it's just the point. It's just good. And I also cannot be feared during this, and because I had to get rid of things uh, like the Berserker Rage, which I wasn't super happy about, but it was, it was necessary for everything else to fit in this build, uh, this kind of replaces it really nicely. Uh, and it gives me a pet now. I'd like a better pet. I think I'd like a pet with a slow on it. Sometimes the hamstring feels a little iffy, even though it is very, very good. But yeah, for the most part, it seems to be working extremely well. I would say this build is like 95% optimized uh, for what it's trying to do and with what I've just said in mind. You know, not if you just look at it, you know, obviously you'd think, well, you got to get rid of some of these spells to make it better for PvE, and then you've got to get more spells to make it a little bit better for PvP. But in terms of the core, in terms of what we're looking at, it's about 95% good. Now that 5% can make a stupidly high difference. And that's where I'm saying that there are some people that may have optimized it to a higher degree. But I would say that being in that 95th percentile, so to speak, that's incredible. It's really good to be, um, to know that this build is basically where it needs to be. I think it's incredible. And I'm gonna have a link in the description below to my Discord where you can find the build there, just like I do all of my builds. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now, guys, is bust out level 70. And, <laughs> oh man, this has been a journey. We'll round it all out. Well, that was a hell of a way to reach level 70. I joined this BG when it was already too far gone, uh, and yet in a really small amount of time, I was able to make a really big difference. It wasn't enough, obviously, uh, but hey, it was a hell of a lot of fun. 17-2 max damage. Okay. Oh, god damn. This build is stupid. Okay, guys, time is of the essence, and with that in mind, we're gonna go ahead and end the video right here. If you want to see more Dragon Warrior and then we can see what that DPS and PvP might look like at max level, make sure to like this video and also to subscribe if you want to keep seeing the Dragon Warrior and other Project Ascension builds and other MMO content in the future as well. This guy has been absolutely ridiculous. So once again, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, but I'll see you in the next video. McDoubles out.